What's going on, y'all? Um, this is the season finale of K. Michelle. My life is episode six, the season finale, and this season is over so quick. But I already knew that it would be because um, K. Michelle said on numerous interviews this summer that it was going to be like six or seven episodes, and it was not going to be a long season because they were trying to um, see where they were going to go with the show, if they wanted to pick it up. They was just testing it out. And apparently the ratings are good, so they're going to bring it back for a second season. But before I get into the review, let's just talk about K. Michelle's new album, Anybody Want to Buy a Heart. It's in stores right now, so I think you all should get the CD. It includes the singles, um, Love Them All, Maybe I Should Call, and she just premiered a new video for Something About the Night. Um, I want to tell y'all that this album is way different from her first album, which was Rebellious Soul that I did um, a CD corner review on. And it shows her musically growing as a person and as an artist. It has a lot of different, um, you know, vibes to it. It has, you know, the straight R&B vibe. It has rock vibes. It has jazz and soul vibes. It has country vibes. It got pop vibes. It has a lot of different vibes. So it has Motown vibes, like... It's a lot of different things going on, and um, it's a very good album. My favorite songs um, on this album is pretty much all of them, because I love all 14 tracks. But um, if I want to pick my faves, my favorite, 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 because I like every song, but my favorites would probably be Hard To Do, Cry, Maybe I Should Call, Miss You Goodbye, Build Me A Man, Get In My Bed, God I Get It, Drake Will Love Me, Love Them All, Going Under, how do I know? How do you know something about the just the whole damn CD, y'all? I'm sorry, that's the whole damn CD. But make sure y'all support good, good music. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the CD does because it's already number two on iTunes main and it's number one on R&B iTunes. So it's already coming off to a good start. So I really hope you guys support great music. Y'all know how much I love K. That is my girl. She stole my heart back in 2009 and she never ever gave it back and I don't want her to give it back. And you know I met her in person and I rock with her. And I don't think y'all understand how much I love this woman. This this review, this, this video is supposed to be about the K. Michelle show but it's gotten me um, going into how much I love this woman. See, the first time I even heard about K. Michelle was back on on, on on a message board called Lil Kim's Own. That's the first time I ever heard about Kay. She had this mix. Uh, it was this video that she was singing on top of the piano. And she was singing this song called Where They Do That At. And from the moment I saw that, I fell in love with her. It was just something about her that made me fall in love with her. It's the authenticness. It was everything about her that I loved. And Fallen came, no, Faking It came out. Then Fallen came out. And then, you know, the, what's the 901 mixtape came out. And I kept following her. It was, follow her on Twitter. She had like 15, 20,000 followers. Then, you know, I Just Can't Do This came out. And then I was still looking for her album. I remember when she had that U stream right the night before, um, the night that Four Color, the Four Color Girls mixtape came out. I was in that U stream watching her. She was playing songs off the Pain Medicine album on her computer when she was at you know, she visited Memphis. You know what I'm saying? I think she was at her mom's house in Memphis. And she was playing songs on the computer while she was on Ustream. Then, um, the song For My Birthday had leaked. And then, not only did the song For My Birthday leak, um, the song How Many Times came out. And that was one of my favorite, favorite singles from K. Michelle. And then, I, I was so hurt when an album did not come out. Then, there was the How to Love remake and... And all about me and girlfriend leaked and MP3 leaked. There was a whole lot of songs that leaked that I loved. The Many Men Freestyle, the the Metley, like the um what was it? The best night of my life. We mobbing all types of shit. And then for me to find out that she was on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, I was so excited because I knew that she would take this and do damage with it. And she did. And from that point on, just watching her every week. Just made me fall in love with her even more. Because we really didn't get to see her personality too much before Love and Hip Hop. But when I saw her on Love and Hip Hop, I saw a lot of me in her. All of my friends called me the male K. Michelle. Like just the other day. Like somebody, just just tonight actually, somebody reposted her cussing the folks out on Bossa. And they said that was all me. Everything about this woman just mirrors me. 
like everything like we have similar personalities we both from the south we got a quick tone quick wit we're funny and hilarious and shit and not everybody takes us well and i love her and she just reminds me so much of myself and then she came out with rebellious soul and then she came down here to jackson um for the concert and i met her backstage and it was just a wonderful feeling and mind you i had already been acquainted with k michelle before like i talked to her on the phone when she used to um let the fans call in and stuff. Right right before Love and Hip Hop, she knew exactly who I was. She'd been following me on Twitter for the past three years. She just followed me on Instagram a few months ago. And I must say that it's just a blessing to be a, a K. Michelle fan. I love K. Michelle. Don't nobody understand how much I love her. And the reason why, and it's probably why I fight so much for her. Because the person that I know, the person that I met is not the person that everybody talk about. So I don't know that bitch y'all be talking about. But that bitch that I'm talking about, I know her. And that, that. Ugh, I just can't continue. Let me just get into the show. But make sure y'all buy the album. Um, she um meets up with Paris and Nima and Jonathan. She announces that she's going on a trip to LA. She got a lot of meetings to do, and she's gonna meet up with Russell Simmons for a project, and she's gonna meet up with her baby daddy. And she tells a story about how they were in love in college. He wanted to marry her, but she didn't want to marry him because she wanted to be a star. In addition to the breakup, he went and started dating her sorority sister and they got married and that was the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to her. So now she wants to talk to him and make things right with him for the sake of their son Chase, which I think is a, a big thing for her. Um, Tracy, uh, she wants to meet up with, uh, yeah, Tracy, she brings Tracy along and her and Paris immediately get into it. Everything was fine until Paris, big, um peanut butter and jelly chin ass decided to, to bring up some bullshit and they get into it and i just don't really get why paris don't uh, sorry y'all i know that tracy stole from paris but i mean stole from k but i actually like tracy honestly i really do like her i like her personality and i think that uh with with her being here before the fame i do think that that her and k should try to fix things she was here before the fame Paris already looked like a fucking freeloader from the very beginning. I said that from the first review. That bitch looked like a damn hefty, hefty garbage bag ass freeloader. That's how I felt from the jump. They get into it. So K. Michelle meets up with Russell Simmons and she basically says, you know, they talk about doing projects together. Then she tells him about her house. And everything going on with her friends. And she does so much more for everybody else than herself. And he gave her great advice. Sometimes you got to say bye bitch to, to a couple of people in your life. And sometimes you do have to do that. No matter how much it hurts. You got to say bitch bye to a couple of people sometimes. If they ain't doing you right. And they ain't being there for you the way they need to. Bitch bye. You got to do it sometimes. I had to do it. And it hurt me to do it. But I had to do it. So then K. Michelle and Tracy. um, They come together while K. was doing her thing with the dancer. Or whatever and they try to talk about their friendship and as you can see they are both over it like Kay ain't trying Tracy ain't trying it's like we walking on eggshells for no reason we're drifting further apart and it's like we might as well just leave well enough alone like I'm tired of looking like a thief I'm tired of not trusting you and thinking you a thief I'm tired of trying to give you a chance when everybody else thinks you a certain way and because we've been together for so long whatever it was sad to see Kay and Tracy end their friendship and honestly, come next season, I really want to see them work it out because I do think that Tracy was genuine. You know, she might have made her mistake, but at the end of the day, everybody makes mistakes. And I know that somebody stealing from you is not the is not something that you can easily forgive. But let me tell y'all something. I have I have a brother, and he's um a brother on my father's side, and he came here from New Jersey and stayed here for a little while. He stole from me. You know what I'm saying? He stole from me. He stole um, a digital camera from us right from above our nose and we didn't even know it. And to this day, you know, it took me a while to get over it. But at the end of the day, he made one mistake. And I forgave him at the end of the day because that's my brother and I love him to death. And I know somebody going to see this review and try to make what I just said about him bigger than what it is. But I don't give a fuck because that's my brother and I love him. At the end of the day, yeah, he took from me. He took something from me. Yeah, he stole from me. That's the worst thing you can do to somebody. But at the end of the day, I forgave him at the end of it all. And you know, we were like 18 and 19 when it happened. 19, 20 years old when this shit happened. But And I still remember. I never forgot it. You know, at the end of the day, we might be cool and everything. We might be building a relationship. But at the end of it all, you know, you took from me. But it's water under the bridge. At the end of the day, you have to learn how to forgive people. And you have to learn how to work on your trust. 
And you know what I'm saying? That situation with me and my brother, that happened like five or six years ago. So it's easy for me to get past that. But with Kay, it's all about growing and build, rebuilding trust. If you love somebody the, the way you say you do, then you can try to take the steps to forgive them. That's all I'm saying. So I really want to see Kay and Tracy make up. Because I'm all for rooting for people that's been in, in people's life before the fame. Tracy was here before the fame. She was your bitch from Memphis. I feel like y'all have it in y'all to make it work out. I loved seeing Kay with her baby daddy. I've always wanted to see how her baby daddy was. And they all, they talked about their issues and everything. And he admitted to his wrongs and she admitted to hers. All she wanted to know is when she moved to California, would he be there for her? And help her out with Chase. And he agreed and she felt like Chase needed to know his daddy. And needed to know his sister that's coming up. And, you know, they agreed to be there and co-parent the way they should. And that was a good thing. You know what I'm saying? I really did appreciate seeing it. So, kudos to you, Kay. You are growing before my eyes. I'm loving every second of it. So, Kay announced to Nima, Jonathan, and Paris that she's moving to L.A. And they start crying and shit. Like, they ain't gonna never see ass no more. But it was a touching moment. But come to find out, Paris was the one that was stealing too. And my thing about it is, she was nothing but a freeloader for the beginning. Free meals, free money, free um drinks, free everything. Kay treating me, all that shit. That's all she used to talk about. So I knew that she was a thieving big bitch. All this time sitting up here trying to come for Tracy. What Meanwhile, you using Kay Carr to go to the nearest dealer to get yourself a turkey sandwich. Bitch, have a motherfucking seat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even get over Paris with this shit. Her and her gummy bear worm, her and her gummy bear rolls and her neck need to have a motherfucking seat. But that's all I really gotta say about that, y'all. Um, I love the season. I love the show. I love me some K. Michelle. I love the cast. Even even though I don't like Paris on the show, I don't think that she's a horrible person. But I just didn't like her character on the show. I liked Tracy better than Paris. That's just my opinion. But that's my review. Um, Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Still Standing without the G. Scotty Underscore by Nature is my Instagram, and Team Scotty is my Facebook fan page. Shout out to Vlogger Review. That's a that's a blog. It vlogs on um, us YouTubers as far as me, Justin, C Minty, James Caldwell. Um, let me see. Uh, Sayshawn Bradley, much love from KY, Forest Rocks, Bounty Blue, all of us, Dustin Ross, all of us. So. You know, um, check her out. Check them out. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to Yashi. She's an upcoming, upcoming YouTuber. And she's a faithful watcher of my show. So shout out to Yashi. And I'm out of here, you guys. To my Hollywood Divas and my Bad Girls Club review. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.